Hi everybody, uh, today I wanted to do an industry review um, by a sector uh, for the energy sector and just see what's going on uh, with the energy sector um, specifically. So technology sector is the number one sector invested in uh, and then healthcare and then energy. So you can see here on this graph uh, that basically healthcare and energy are the similar. Uh, real estate is number three, financials uh, is, uh, excuse me, is n number four and five and so on. So. Uh, but you can see that basically uh, energy is a very important sector and uh, one of the main reasons this past year um, is because the uh, uh, if you look at the charts uh, for the full chart um, and you look at it for one year performance, uh, the energy sector has been basically the sector to be involved in. So uh, in terms of money to be made, um, energy, you know, you can see 45% for ExxonMobil, increase in price. Uh, is quite a big chunk of uh, increase. Uh, so what I did is I took the ETF listings uh, for the top uh, companies uh, for energy here, um, and it's the number third or, or second really uh, for assets under management, um, and you can take a look at all of them right here. So uh, the top one it happens to be the XLE um, Spider Fund, uh, and it has by far the most assets under management. Um, maybe, uh, you know, so, and then the second one is the VDE, Vanguard, and so on. So you can take a look at any one of these to take a look. Uh, we're going to take a look at the top one just because it is the top one, uh, and it has uh, had uh, some good year-to-date returns on it. Uh, so what we want to do first is we want to verify that, indeed, it does cover all the major uh, players in the industry. So you can see ExxonMobil here, Chevron, uh, and then the percentages are about right as well. So you can see in the industry that there isn't, this is the this is the energy industry right in here. Um, and you can see that there's not a whole lot of players in the energy industry uh, in general. Um, but ExxonMobil is definitely uh, number one and Chevron is definitely number two. Um, and then you, this is by sales. Uh, so you can see, you know, $350 billion of sales and approximately uh, 200 billion and then the market cap is basically has to do with the bubble size so however large the bubble is here uh, is approximately how big the company is in terms of investment uh, in the stock market so uh, the ETF itself has a 31% performance so it's right around in here um, is where it is but certain companies like ExxonMobil has done a little bit better you can see your performance for Chevron has been 40% 45% here ConocoPhillips 50, almost 55 percent LNG uh, and so on and you can see Oxy up here and some others uh, that did even way better uh, but it's quite a number of companies uh, on the positive side in the energy sector. So I consider this graph pretty important. Uh, on the y-axis here we have average volume in US dollars so the higher you're up means the more you're traded in general. So you can see here that uh, pretty much by far uh, uh, I'll add some more range here so we can see if there's some other companies. But we can say pretty much by far, ExxonMobil is the number one traded company. Uh, a average uh, average volume in U.S. dollars is 1.73 billion. So that's quite a lot of average volume. You can see their chart has been kind of going down recently. Uh, and then you can see Chevron, uh, kind of go Phillips up here, um, and they're doing quite well. Um, and uh, Devon Energy Corporation. So now, uh, quite surprisingly, the price to sales ratio. Now, this is the uh, x-axis. So you can see that uh, certain companies have slightly better price to sales ratios. So Exxon Mobil has slightly better price and sales ratio uh, than, uh, say, uh, Chevron Corporation. Uh, so the price of the stock versus uh, the number of sales that they have um, looks a little bit better. Uh, but you can see some of these other ones. Uh, a little bit further out so so there are a number of ways to look at this I have these other two graphs here I mean, take a look at this uh, if you'd like so let's jump right into the chart and see what's going on uh, I'm gonna primarily focus on the MACD today uh, but we're gonna look at the overall price action uh, just to see what's been happening uh, over the past uh, basically 20 years here so one important point to make here is that according to MACD, we are pretty much at the all-time high even after this drop that we've had. Um, so <clears throat> at least according to MACD, even this drop here takes us back to here, um, which is still higher than here. So this upward trend that we had was so significant 
um, starting around 2020. Uh, it was just a huge upward trend. So one of the main questions is, we are going down, we haven't crossed the signal line on the MACD, so that implies that maybe you know we're still in positive territory, we can still do some positive stuff here, uh, even if we're going down a little bit, um, just in the short term. If you recall, in the healthcare industry, we've already definitely crossed the signal line and gone into almost negative territory. So it, it is a debate. Uh, we are still pretty positive here uh, on the energy sectors in general. So the nice part about MACD is you can kind of tell that uh, when certain trends have actually started as downtrends. So this downtrend here that we saw here really started as a downtrend here and really started even with a downtrend over here. So we can say that uh, this downtrend right here was really, really, really bad 2008 um, and it took us quite low um, and a lot of people are comparing the current uh, recession that we're having now since 2008. So if it is anything like 2008, we can kind of start to estimate uh, where we're going to be um, based on the 2008 drop. Um, but really, we did see another pretty big drop in 2014. Not a lot of people talk about that. Uh, another big drop in 2018. Um, and then finally, the biggest drop now in 2020, um, when the prices got just to be uh, negative or positive and no one was sure what the price of oil was, they're pretty much paying you to take oil. So if you take the price times the volume, you end up with what's called the Elder Force Index, uh, and that's what we're looking at right here. So you can see that back in 2008, um, that downward trend that we saw there was far worse than what we're seeing right now. Um, whether or not we get to this level, uh, is an important statement, right? So if we get to maybe even half that level, uh, where could we potentially be on the price graph up here is a big question. So the interesting thing is it is a little bit more clear to see like where this price is going, whether it be up or down, you can kind of say that we're gonna know pretty certain uh, by uh, you know next year sometime, uh, probably, uh, April, May uh, next year should tell us a lot more uh, by then. Anyway, I don't like it when people say these kind of things like April, May, wait till then. Um, but you can kind of see uh, here that uh, you can see a general trend where the the average two range, this is kind of a measure of the volatility, uh, it definitely was increasing way before uh, the crash here of 2008. So you can see that it was definitely, definitely, definitely increasing. And here we see uh, if there is another major crash, we know that the volatility would probably keep increasing. It's a good sign to see this volatility kind of dropping a little bit. Um, it's still going up significantly, which is a bad sign. Um, so that could warn us of a potential uh, downfall. Uh, this is kind of a graph that I use called a volume oscillator pretty often. It's just a uh, measurement between 8 and 16 uh, intervals. Uh, and I have a moving average of 16 behind this, so I can kind of see where the moving average is. So typically when the volume is higher, that's a good time to trade. So whether or not... Uh, whether or not uh, you think the price is going up or down, uh, when the volume is on this positive side of this, uh, it's usually a good sign. And when it's significantly positive, that's a very good sign. Problem right now is that the volume is decreasing in the energy market. Uh, so that's a big question, whether or not that's just decreasing for the ETF itself. Uh, we have to look at maybe ExxonMobil and some other Chevron and see uh, precisely what's happening with theirs. Um, I could load up uh, Exxon here, XOM. Uh, we can see what's been going on with them really quick on the same volume chart. And it looks like, yes, they too have been dropping on a monthly volume. You can see that's been dropping quite a bit and you can see the volume in there. Uh, so not only has the volume been dropping in the ETF, it's also been dropping uh, in the regular sector as well. So that's kind of a bad sign. Um, usually higher volume means the prices are gonna be more accurate. Um, so whether this price is accurate up here, there's low volume on this. Um, so it's kind of a question. Now looking at the money flow, which is just basically price times volume and then kind of summing that up. Um, money flow basically has been pretty stable. You can see it's a kind of zero. It's actually been a little bit positive. Um, from here on, it kind of went positive, um, but it was quite negative just because of all this negativity down here. 
Um, so it is a little bit of a debate uh, what's going on with the money flow right now. It looks like it's starting to head back down, uh, but it's overall the the main money flow into the market was basically back here. Um, you can see uh, 2004 um, and so on. So the Elder Force Index is one of my favorite ones to look at. Uh, again, I take a careful look at this. Um, you can kind of compare peaks and valleys uh, over the years and see what's been going on. So you can compare like what we're seeing now to other times. Um, but I definitely recommend looking at this one if you have a chance to do so. So keep in mind, uh, no matter what anyone says, the uh, MACD is quite high here and the price is quite high, uh, relatively speaking. I mean, we've seen a lot of kind of up and downs in the energy market, but we are still quite high uh, in terms of price. So this is some other indicators you might want to take a look at, stochastic. Uh, there's even this thing called the Arun. I really like the Arun just because it tells us some ideas of when the market was trending up. So you see some trending up period from 2013. 2014 and then some trending down period in here uh, maybe trending up in this area and then kind of mixed areas in here um, but uh, in general trending up at the end here so we have seen basically amazing mostly trending up uh, time period and you can see that shows on the RSI as well with a little, maybe a divergence here or uh, getting ready to see something different uh, so one thing that I would be very concerned about in general is looking at the ATR and the volatility. So if you look at this little blue line here, I drew it about 13 points. Um, right now, we're talking about an average to range of about 13 and a half points per month right now. So if you look at that line right there, that's about 13 and a half points. Um, so it could drop uh, up to that much or go up that much or just stay half of that. So half of that range. Uh, which is about 17%, uh, so say 8%, 8% up, 8% down, that's basically what we're talking about per month uh, until we solve what's going to go down or up uh, in a more stable way. So typically, um, typically we're talking about an ATR of about 6 points, so 6 points is, is essentially about 8%, so half that. So we're basically... Um, you know, it's uh, quite a different time period right now in general. Um, certainly, hopefully, we won't see what we saw back in 2008. So back then, uh, we saw uh, ATR of uh, average range about 16 points a month. So that would be, you know, right in here again. So you can see approximately that's what was happening. There's just huge drops. Um, and that's kind of where we're heading, but you can see that we kind of have tailed off a little bit. So it could be that we won't see what we saw back in 2008. We might see uh, approximately 13 points per month uh, rather than say 16 points like we saw up here. Um, but yeah. So keep in mind, there are a lot of ways to study the market uh, and looking at the energy sector. Uh, we looked at the main ETF here. Um, so this should give us a pretty good guide of what's going on overall in the energy market. Um, if you do like what you hear about here, please like and subscribe. Uh, I always like to hear from people, so comment, uh, make some comments on the video. Tell me which indicators you're interested in or what kind of details I'd like to hear more about. Um, we would glad to try to talk with you about it. It's always fun talking with people about what they think is going on uh, in the market. Um, so I hope this has really helped you, and thanks again for listening. Uh, I'll see you later. Ciao.